guys, this is Carrie from Tone Wars. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. We're really excited to hang out with you and to have you be part of our community. If you like what you see here, here's a couple ways you can support the channel. We always appreciate Super Chats very much, but here's a couple other ways you can support the channel and get something in return other than just content. If the Super Chat feature doesn't work for you, or if you're watching after the live stream, Jared's PayPal account link is listed below. Any donation of any amount is greatly appreciated. Since the show is sponsored in part by Motor City Guitar, we've included an affiliate link below. By clicking the link below, everybody wins. You're getting a great deal on some awesome equipment, you're supporting a store that has tons of inventory and great customer service, and you're supporting Tone Wars. And on top of all of that, if you live outside of the state of Michigan, whenever you buy anything from Motor City Guitar, you don't pay any sales tax. And last but certainly not least, you can visit our website at ToneWars.com. The link is below. There you will find some awesome Kemper profile packs with the tone and feel guitar players love. You will also find presets for the very popular Helix, HX FX, HX Stomp, and Pod Go. Alright, the show's about to begin. We look forward to hanging out with you, so grab your favorite drink and join us in the live chat. Welcome, Welcome to Tone Wars. Wars. Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for joining me on this last minute impromptu live stream. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm all ready for uh, chilling for the night and uh, I've been working all day. And uh, let's just get right into it. Um, so I've been hearing ramblings today of the new Iconic series, uh, 5150 by EVH. And I've been seeing pictures of it all over the place and it got leaked maybe accidentally on purpose or whatever um and uh <laughs> i just wanted to uh go over some uh, of the features with you guys and just have a quick discussion about it um i just got to tell my my buddy uh let's see i'm live okay here we go um yeah just wanted to go over the features real quick i did a quick uh list of the features and we can just get have a quick discussion this won't be long this will probably be half hour tops and i'll do a couple riffs and maybe a mix or two on the uh, stealth just to have it on here um i can't remember most of my songs right now because i've been working so much so i'm just going to do a couple simple ones so at least you get a chance to hear it in a couple mixes um you know and uh I'll do some isolated riffs on it as well. Um, so, yeah, let's get into it real quick. Um, you guys probably know uh, the deal. You guys have probably seen the same um, posts and maybe some of the videos that I saw. I saw Fluff's post and Stay Metal Ray's video, and I figured, you know what? Uh, maybe I should just do a quick you know, stream about it. So, um, apparently, they're going to re, uh, re do a re uh, reissue uh, of the Iconic series, they're going to call it. So, series is kind of interesting because it might be, um, you know, maybe a series of his different amplifiers. Uh, maybe, like, his JMP. I mean, some of his Marshall stuff. I mean, who knows what they're going to do, you know? Um, but at least they're going to start with the PV5150 kind of era, you know, uh, and see where we go from there. So here are the specs on it as far as what I've uh, seen anyways. Um, you know, it's going to be uh, 80 watts, which is really interesting because um, the uh, original was 120. So I'm like, why lower wattage? Um, and it's going to go for 899, which I think is a, you know, really nice price, but it's like, all right, well, we'll, we'll come back to that. Um, two channels, green and red, just like the original. Green channel has a, uh, like a like a overdrive kind of knob on it. Red channel has a burn button. Um, I don't know if the burn button is a volume boost for solos or if it's more of an overdrive kind of thing in front of the amp. Uh, who knows? I mean, we'll have to see. The noise gate, of course, it uh, which is a cool feature. It's going to have a noise gate. I like that because the original 5150 was noisy um and a, a lot of amps were back then so no disrespect it's just the way it is um and it has four eight sixteen ohms two jj ecc 83s preamp tubes which is really strange um and i've had conflicting um 
information on the 606 power tubes. Some people said there was two. Some people said there were four. So I'm not really sure what the deal is with that. Um, it has an XLR DI out, which I think is a really cool feature to have. Um, foot switch, you know, and then all the other just typical stuff that amps have, you know, comes with a cable, blah, 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 you know. So I'll leave these up for a second so we can uh, discuss this. Um, and then I'll go to your, uh, your questions or comments in the chat. I posted this on the community page too, and I, I guess I screenshotted some of the comments there, and we can read those. Um, and I, I appreciate people's insight on this as well, because li literally, I just got home from work like two hours ago, and I've been out all day, so I'm I'm just giving you information as I got it. Um, but I think it's pretty cool. It's interesting that this is happening. Um, we knew that James Brown was back with EVH, and we had a feeling that he was going to come up with something um like a revision of their original amp or who knows what you know but we're all real excited because the original amp genius is there doing this so it's actually really exciting so let's get to the 80 watts and the price point really quick um and some of the other uh features and stuff kind of tie into it and i'll give you my opinions about this but again this is all kind of speculation because there's a lot we don't know and we just saw a picture and you know, there's a lot of people just speculating, so I'm just going to jump in the fray with that. Um, so 80 watts, um, I don't know why they would do 80 as opposed to at least 100 or 120. I know 80 is still pretty freaking loud, so okay, we'll let that kind of simmer for a minute. Uh, 899, very interesting. So I wonder uh, with this amplifier, let me, let me turn this uh, screen off, so I'll pull it back up in a minute. Um, I wonder with this amplifier if uh, they decided to be like, all right, let's do features and make it very affordable. But in order to make an amp full of these types of features and make it affordable at $899, um, we're going to have to do some other things to make that happen. Maybe we'll cut the power down a little bit, maybe a, a smaller power amp section. Um, and the other thing is two preamp tubes. The original had five, so it's like... What's going on there with that? So maybe there's some other kind of hybrid thing going on, which, I mean, look, I'm not going to poo-poo anything until I I play it because I've been, you know, we've all been wrong before about stuff like that. But uh, if that's the thing, like if it's going to be like a hybrid kind of thing, like I don't know about that, you know, that's, I'm still kind of on the shelf with that. Again, not trying to be negative, just sharing my initial thoughts about it. But when you go from five preamp tubes down to two it's like what's what's happening there you know like what is what are we sacrificing to get that and again maybe their whole thing is let's go with the price point uh that's really affordable and they'll fly off the shelves and uh we'll do all these features and sacrifice a little bit of power and i use the term sacrifice loosely um to make this happen um the thing is though uh there's a lot of thunder outside right now. Hopefully I don't lose power. Um, the thing is, though, is is honestly, I think that if there was ever an amplifier that was going to sell like crazy, it's going to be this one, no matter what they did with it regarding price. So I feel like, this is me on a fly on the wall in the boardroom with some say, like like it matters, you know. Um, ooh, we got a flicker. Um, but... I would, I would have to say that, uh, like, guys, why don't we just go freaking all in on this amp and make it ridiculous? People are going to want, like, this is the monster. This is the freaking beast that started the whole thing. If we're going to do a reissue of this, let's do something that's just freaking insane. And you know what? Let's not spare any expense. You know I mean? Yeah, we don't have to get you know, organic amplifiers dug in Egypt and flown over on, you know, electric helicopters to make this happen, you know, or whatever. But let's do something where we really make this thing a modern rage monster, a modern version of its old self, and really uh, make it insane. And, um, yeah, I'm not saying charge five grand for it, but, I mean, I'm pretty sure that... Um, the iconic version of the original for maybe even two grand i mean i i think it would sell very well and it's like i just i don't know why companies sell themselves sell themselves short sometimes and think well we gotta we gotta make it affordable and it's stuff and stuff and it's like i appreciate that but at what cost at what expense you know let's 
I mean, let's pay like tribute to this thing and really make it sick, you know? Again, I'm not saying it's not going to be sick. Who knows? It might be ridiculous, you know? Um, I'm sure it'll be good because uh, it's not like they do anything that's, that's not good. It's going to be good. It's just what level of good is it and how good is it going to be compared to what a lot of us think that it could have been, you know, uh, based on the stuff that it doesn't have. Um, if it was up to me, I would spend uh, the extra money and keep the features because I think the features are great. A, a DI out, that's awesome. Um, and uh, the noise gate, that's awesome. I don't know what the boost is. I don't know, again, if it's just a volume boost, if it's after the preamp or before it or what. So we don't really know about that. Um, but that's cool. I'll take that. Um, maybe a modern tweak on the sound and everything and feel i mean that would be cool um but uh, it's really let me pull these features back up so i don't get sidetracked here um so uh yeah but the thing is is the tubes again if it's just got two 6l6 power tubes if again i've heard conflicting stories on it, if it's two or four if it's got two it's like there's probably some kind of hybrid thing going on with solid state and it's like ooh, again I'm not trying to be negative, but my initial response is I'm kind of recoiling at that a little bit. Um, I just don't know about that, especially for an amp that's so iconic with Eddie being so like into tubes and real tone and plugging a guitar straight into an amp. And it's like everything, every single amp that I've played that's been solid state, there's been this kind of thinness to it and, um, and it just in coldness and, I just hope that that's not the case with this amp, but maybe there's some stuff that, you know, James Brown knows that we, I'm sure there's a ton of things he knows that we don't know, uh, but maybe there's some stuff that he's figured out to, you know, use less tubes and, and be able to uh, have still tons of power. I mean, look at the, uh, um, you know, the PRS MT-15, that's got, you know, <laughs> that's a small amp, that thing's just freaking ridiculous sounding, so, yeah, maybe there's some stuff he's uh, applying to make that happen, so, um, anyways, uh, very interesting, uh, I think, I'm, I'm excited about it, I think it's going to be really cool, I'm looking forward to it, as far as, and what I mean by it's going to be really cool is, it's going to be cool to check it out, I want to see what he comes up with, but, man, let me get my glasses here. Again, end of the day, so I'm, <laughs> I'm winding down for the night. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what they come up with, you know. Um, okay, so Ryan, what's happening? Jason Lewis, Luke Wilson, uh, Stone Jr. 74, Adrian, uh, Aaron Dean, Sean Casey, what's happening? Darren Moore, what's up? Jim Moore, Eric Salinas. Perrin Davis, Warm Cord, what's up, Jay? Uh, Adrian, Luke, uh, hopefully I said hi to everybody here. Um, Frankie Boots, what's happening? All right, so let me go back and um, before I get to your live comments, let me read a couple here. I did a screenshot of um, in my community section. Um, and again, guys, I won't be on long. I'll play a couple riffs for you in a few here. I just want to make sure I stay on point tonight because a lot of people are going to do the rewatch on this and they're going to want me to kind of stick to the, the main points here um so christian says christian your says uh perhaps it has um those solid state tube replacements uh that fit regular tube sockets or something similar in less critical tube positions such as not v1 good point that could be possible you know because i guess the v1 is the most important in the preamp section so maybe maybe it doesn't matter as much after that and they found a way to be like well it's kind of like we can't tell the difference so let's just go ahead and go with something solid state um it's less volatile less delicate and we can't tell the difference and we're saving money and we can sell this at a, a good price point because the thing is is to eddie's credit and god god bless eddie um you know, he always wanted something affordable. That was his, like, it was his main goal is to have something that anybody could buy. He didn't want this amp that was like unreachable by everybody. So that was a really cool thing. So maybe that's where they're coming from with this. Maybe they're trying to honor that tradition. Because if I remember when that amp first came out, it was about this price. Wasn't it about $8.99? I think that's what I paid for my 
combo a long time ago. I don't remember now. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was around there. So maybe they're trying to stick with that original price point as well, and they had to do some things to make that happen just to pay homage to the whole thing. So who knows? Because, again, Eddie's thing was he wanted things to be affordable. I remember that uh, when, when the, his amps came out. And I think that's really cool. Um, so Dustin uh, Flickinger says, it's quite a design, design change, that's for sure. Not sure how, it'll, how close it'll come to the original. Two preamp tubes seems like a hybrid. Yeah, you got a good point there, Dustin. I mean, it's possible. Um, yeah, and then Christian said he doesn't see it on the Chicago Music uh, Exchange site uh, or Reverb. So, I mean, it's, it's um, yeah, maybe they pulled it down. Somebody said they sold out, you know, so maybe maybe they're already pre-sold. I don't, who knows? I mean, we might be getting catfished. You know, we might all wake up tomorrow morning and find out that this whole thing was a big hoax and we'll all look like idiots. <laughs> but you know what? I figured if Fluff is posting about it, um, and Stay Metal Ray's posting about it. I guess it's okay if I do. <laughs> there, are, there are channels that are a lot bigger than mine, so um, I'm just following suit here and uh, giving them credit as well. Um, so let me uh, let me read your comments real quick here. we got 35 people here. Oh, this is awesome, especially for an impromptu live stream. This is really cool. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Um, let's see here. Aaron Dean, I hope this is better than... Uh, Let's see here. Oh, oh yeah. Well, hopefully it's a better video. <laughs> I don't know who that guy is, but um, yeah, hopefully it is good. Um, uh, let's see here. Oh, Sean Casey says EVH. Uh, he said hi, Jared, and everybody. EVH Stealth is the king. It's it's definitely the biggest no-brainer amp out there. It is absolutely phenomenal. I love this amp. Every time I plug into it, I'm like, yep, still love it just as much as I did on day one, you know? Um, let's see here. Okay, so Darren's going to catch the replay. All right, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, Eric Salinas, only two preamp tubes. Yeah, that's the thing a lot of people are concerned about. And again, two power amp tubes or four, depending on who you read. I think uh, Stay Metal Ray was saying that it was uh, two, and another guy I watched said it was four. So I don't really know. Um, and they were even highlighting the specs when they were reading them, so it was in there. So it wasn't like he misread it. I mean, that's what it was in the specs. So who knows, man? Interesting. Um, amp full of diodes. Yeah, <laughs> Adrian. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, it might be interesting. Um that said, when I had my Mesa uh, dual rack roadster, I preferred the diodes um, as opposed to the tube tra recto tracking. So it's a little tighter, at least on that amp. Every amp's different, but I like that. Uh, could be made in China, Aaron. Yeah, it might be, you know. Uh, Luke says price point amp. Yeah, it's possible. It could very well be. The, the problem I have with price point amps, though, is it's one thing to release like a big mothership amp. You know, and to be like, all right, this is our beast. You know, this thing's amazing, especially if you're doing some big iconic amplifier. Don't make it a price point amp. I mean, yeah, make it affordable, but you don't need to make it like, you know, uh, super cheap for everybody. Because the problem with that is, it, how good is that for your name when they start not sounding good or not being reliable or just, you know, because people compare. This channel's all about comparing. I mean, I put everything against the freaking gauntlet here in the wall. And uh, I'll tell you what, if it doesn't stand up, this is my standard bearer, the Stealth. If something doesn't stand up to the Stealth, it's out of here. I mean, if you can't beat a Stealth, you know, as far as a metal amp goes, or at least have a good standing against it, we got problems, you know. So I, I hate the whole price point thing. But again, to finish my point, if you're going to make like a big mothership amp and do something cool, it's okay then to have like the affordable or economy version of that out there for people who want that. Friedman just did it with their um, their mini BE, you know, solid state amp. Um, I haven't played it, but I mean, for guys who love Friedman and want that Friedman name and sound and they, they can't afford the, the big, big dogs, I mean, yeah, it's nice to have the little, you know, the little Friedman puppy. <laughs> but, you know... Um, I'm okay with having two versions of it, but if you're only going to come up with a price point amp, eh, man, I just think if I, like I said, if I was in the boardroom, I'm like, guys, 
Guys, we have a, a public that are waiting for this. This is going to be the big one. James is back. Everybody's wanting to see what he's going to come up with. And, you know, everybody, everybody wants to see what this next amp is going to be. And there's just so much riding on this. I think we should go all in and just make something super freaking sick. And other people are going to be like, yeah, but the features and then the, the tubes and the power amps. And, oh, it's just going to be so expensive. I'm going to be like, I don't care. I don't care. There are so many people right now that will buy $5,000 amps, $4,000, $3,000, $2,000 amps, the drop of a hat, and they're drooling, waiting for these things to hit the floor so they can come in and get them. And, I mean, I, there's amps I know that came to Motor City Guitar that were super expensive. And it was funny, like I was talking to Marty there, um, I think it was the Jakey Lee amp by Friedman. And, I mean, that was expensive freaking amp. Um, and I was like, oh, I'd love to review that. He goes, those things are already sold before they even hit my, my store. Those things literally came off the truck, bounced right off of Marty's warehouse floor into people's trucks. I mean, they were sold before they got there, and he had like seven of them, I think, and they were gone. So it's like, come on, guys. I mean, if you can see that the market is that hungry for something, and your brand is so well-known and so good and respected and, and loved, um, and so is the person that it's based on. Uh, man, just go all in and make something sick, stupid sick, and blow us away and come up with something new for us to, to you know, to enjoy. Don't, we don't want price point. We want awesome. We want something that's just crazy good. That's, I guess, I, I don't know, tell me if you guys disagree with me, and that's fine if you do. I mean, that's what this is all about here. But I want something crazy, you know, um, and I don't mind parting with the money. And I'm sure a lot of other people feel the same way. Um, let's see, Jason Lewis, with those specs, my guess is 4 6L6 to achieve 80 watts. You're probably right. And two preamp tubes is due to a circuit JB is adding, uh, borrowing from his amp tweaker pedals. Ah, oh, could be. Uh, the Black Star amps use a preamp circuit to boost gain. Okay, well, that, that could possibly be it. Um, I just hope it sounds better than the Black Star amps because, man, I do not, eh, those amps don't gel with me at all. I just, I haven't played one yet that I liked. I always felt that they were lacking something, and maybe it's that circuit they use. I don't know, but every time I plug into a Black Star, I'm like, yeah, it's pretty good, but it just, it's lacking, you know? It's like not enough salt, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's like... Yeah, like somebody only dumped half the packet of Kool-Aid in. <laughs> the color's there, but the flavor's not, you know? So it's that kind of thing with me. Um, let's see here. Or possibly borrowing from his Coop 72 in the custom days. All my opinion. Yeah, could be, man. Could be. Yep, Luke Wilson, amp tweaker in a box. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I, people are agreeing with you, Jason. It could it could be, uh, could be right, you know? Um uh, Frankie Boots, where are you? I have Crazy Thunder too. Yeah, I'm in Michigan. I'm in Waterford, Michigan. So yeah, I mean, I I came down here and everything's flickering and going. I'm like, oh God, don't don't do this to me tonight, you know. Um, okay, so Luke says for sure four six L six power tubes. All right, cool, because that makes me feel a little bit better when I when I because I, I literally I was scouring through videos tonight and make trying to make sure I'm giving you good information and I I adjusted the specs at the last minute before I went live, and that's why I put two question mark four question mark there because I was like, well, which one is it? So hopefully, because I definitely do not want to misinform anybody. That's not what we're about. Um, I like the XLR DI out. I think that's cool, especially for people who want to just you know plug into a uh you know the front of house and just not bring a cab and stuff like that the problem i have with stuff like that typically is um when you have that the the, the di out is usually like the like if you have a, a ir on it i never like it to this day i haven't liked them but who knows it's a great feature but it's such a subjective thing with the impulse responses you know but i still appreciate that and i hope hopefully you can put your own one in there or you know, whatever, but if I used my Helix live with an amp like that, I would put my own IR in the Helix and just do that. So that would be fine, too. Um, Aaron Lucas, what's going on, buddy? Um, good to see you here. 
Okay, Luke Wilson, the lunchbox stealth apparently has only two preamp tubes as well, so there's a precedent in their own lineup. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I know my my uh, stealth has four. Is it four? I think it's four. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm really uh, really loving the stealth. Um, Eric says, Eddie would be cringing at the idea. We shall hear. Yeah, you know, that's that's my thoughts, too, is, like, Eddie was just such an all-natural, like, super organic, like, I just want tubes. I want the amp to just start on fire when I plug into this thing, and I want it to just be ridiculously loud, tons of aggression and balls and rage and great tone and feel. That's what I want. I want it to do, you know, and uh, I just can't imagine Eddie going, yeah, let's go for the... The diodes or the, you know, I just can't imagine him saying that. But, hey, who knows, you know, who knows. Um, let's see, Gunnerman. Nice surprise. Yeah, it's good to see you here, buddy. Yeah, this is kind of a last-minute thing, and I'm so glad that you guys are here. Um, <laughs> uh, Juan, what's going on, man? He says, I wonder if there are just simply easier, quicker... Uh, to make the traditional tube amps. I've been waiting for my Badlander for over seven months. Oh, my God. Yeah, dude, I'm telling you, those Badlanders are hard to come by. Ever since, um, you know, all this stuff happened, I mean, it's been it's been hard. You know, hopefully you get it soon, buddy. Um, it's worth the wait. I got mine, and I love it. Um, what was I going to say? Um, oh, yeah, see, there's a guy here in Michigan. His name's, uh, His last name's Rosa, and he makes amps here. And um, I'm actually going to have some of his amps on pretty soon. I just got to set up the time. But he is an electronic engineer, and he knows a lot. I mean, probably everything about electricity and all that stuff. I mean, the guy's a freaking genius, you know, really, really good, smart guy. And he said uh, he knows how to make an amp sound amazing with half the tubes. He's like, all these guys using all these tubes, I mean, it's cool and everything, but I found a way to to make an amp sound really good without having to use all that glass. And he's like, I feel like I'm not compromising anything. It's just all about, I don't know, I'm not going to speak for him because I don't really know all the jargon, but he found a way to do it. And um, so I want to have one of his amps on and see what it's like because um, things are changing and, and all that. But my, my whole thing is, is I don't want compromise. I hate compromise when it comes to sound and feel. I just hate it. So anytime somebody's like, well, we can save all this money by putting this circuit or this diode or this or that in, and we can save all this money on tubes, and it's like, well, how much different does it sound and feel? Not that much. And at that point, I'm like, well, wait a minute. How much is not that much? You know, can we, can we A-B it? Can we make it defeatable in the amp? And that's what I think, uh, if I was in the room, that's what I would say. Let's make that feature defeatable. And then I can hit a switch and turn it on and off. So I want, I'll play a riff, you turn that switch on and off and defeat your circuit and let it go back to the tube and the circuit. And I want to see if there is a difference. If there's not, then hey, maybe we can go for it. But if there is, even if it's 10%, man, that 10% is what all of us guitar players care about so much. You know, and I think that that 10% is what we talk about when we say, oh, this is lacking or something. It's that 10% that makes us either buy or not buy something a lot of the amps that i've had on the show have been great but if they don't have that 10 percent, i won't buy it you know and all of these amps have their own version of that 10 percent that i love so much i mean for example the stealth okay if the, the the blue channel has just enough gain for me if it had 10 percent less i wouldn't like it on the blue channel i feel like on the blue channel they dialed that channel in perfect and you have just enough i got the gain cranked all the way up on the amp and it sounds amazing does that mean i got a lot of gain in it no it's just enough <laughs> but on the red channel i have the gain at 11 o'clock so that gain that that channel has way too much gain for what i would want to do but i'm glad i love the headroom i love that security then i have to crank it so so if again if it was missing that 10%, because conversely, um, I think it was the white EVH, uh, what was it, the 3, I think, um, that that blue channel on that amp, it was missing, uh, I would never use the blue channel on it. It didn't have enough. If it had 10, maybe 20% more, that's what I'm saying. So that 10%, 
does matter because that's what us players like you know it's like oh if it just had more you know and i played some other amps that didn't have enough aggression for me you know um you know some of the uh some of the um well i won't say names but there's been there's some amps out there that that sound great but they're just they don't have enough aggression i'm like god if it just had i don't know 15 to 20 percent more maybe even 10 percent i don't know I would totally buy this amp, but it just didn't have it for me. So yeah, it that matters. Um, so Aaron Dean's agreeing with me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Can I get a witness? <laughs> um, Luke Wilson, I picked up a hundred watt EVH Stealth EL30. Oh, e, oh, EVH fifty one fifty EL thirty four head. Literally yesterday, and no regrets after seeing the iconic specs. Dude, I want one of those so freaking bad. I want um, an uh, EL34 you know, in the worst way. I want one of those, and I also want to um, uh, move up to the 100-watt uh, Stealth as well. Because when I played that here, um, the red channel was just... <laughs> I could play that all day. I have nothing derogatory or even critically you know, whatever, constructive criticism about that red channel at all on that amp. It is stupid good. Ridiculous. Um, uh, Dan says, agreed on the Black Stars being voiced for rock. Yeah, they just don't have it for me. I mean, they're they're always just not enough, you know. It's like, yeah, it sounds good. They're, they're not bad amps. They just don't work for me. It's that 10%, you know. Um, let's see here. Okay, so oh, Frankie and Stanton Island, boy, that's a big storm if it's hitting both of us. <laughs> um, let me go back here. Um, catching up to you guys. Sorry. Um, Aaron Dean, I agree about the amp sickness. I have spent lots of cash. <laughs> I like the idea of a built-in noise gate, but I want it 100 watts. I, I want, sorry, I want it in 100 watt stealth. Yeah, I absolutely love that amp. Plus, I want MIDI in the 100 watt amps. Yeah, dude. Um, did I don't think it has MIDI, does it? Uh, let me uh, pull that up again. Yeah, I don't see MIDI. Ooh, that's. Oh, because EVH does MIDI. They know how to do MIDI because it's in a lot. You know, it's in the stealth. Yeah, that's man. I don't know. I, I'm tr I'm tr I'm trying not to be negative. You know what I mean? Because we don't know, and I definitely would hate somebody saying stuff about me that wasn't true, uh, or negative when it's like, oh, you just you don't understand or you don't know yet. But I'm just saying, like MIDI. Thanks for bringing that up about the MIDI. Yeah, it's got to be there. You know, I mean, if you're if you're a playing musician. Um, yeah, MIDI is a huge, huge feature, and I saw um, uh, uh, my buddy Jay Croft uh, from Warm Chord Music sent me a video today with um, uh, Dan Trudeau from Rev, and he said uh, he was in an interview with uh, uh, Pulse Hop Studios. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Um, great interview he did with uh, Dan, and that was what Dan said. He said every third or fourth guitar player uses MIDI, so he goes, of course we're going to put it in our amps. I just think MIDI is, it should be a standard feature for, for people who play. I mean, the thing is, I mean, you know, uh, if I was if I was taking, if I was going to do a show tomorrow with any of these amps, I would have to have one with MIDI. And it would break my heart to bring one to not bring one that I love, but it doesn't have MIDI. You know, I would have to be like, well, I got to pick MIDI over you because you don't, you, I can't switch channels, and I'm not going to be Michael Flatley up there river dancing all night while I'm playing guitar. You know, it's not part of my show. Um, so yeah, MIDI should have been in there. Maybe they'll put it in. Maybe this is all preliminary. I mean, who knows? You know, this is a great way for them to kind of put something out there kind of like how movies do it they have like um you know the uh, the audience that sees it before they release it and they'll literally change the ending or add more of this character or less of that one in a movie before they release it because they have these audiences that go in and fill out these cards and 
give their comments and you know like i hated the ending and this is why and i or i love the ending but i i want to see more of this character it sucks that you only had this person in there for a few minutes that character was awesome or you know what i'm saying and maybe it's their way of like let's just see what the public says about this this thing's not done yet it's i mean we can it's still on our bench you know i mean it's supposed to be released in november but there's time you know um so maybe they're like just letting now they're being a fly on the wall going i wonder what people are going to say oh midi a lot of people okay check midi all right Ooh, they want 120 watts all right maybe we should do that uh everybody's complaining about the tubes jim you know yeah maybe we should put more yeah let's take those diodes out and put the tubes in man let's just make them happy Ooh, a lot of people are saying you know they don't mind parting with the extra cash because they want the freaking they want the beast i mean bring the freak bring thor's hammer you know that's what i want to buy bring mjolnir you know i don't want you know the 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 little ball peen hammer <laughs> Uh, who cares if I can't lift it? I want it, you know. So maybe that's what it is. So um, uh, who knows? You know, who knows? I mean, uh, I, I think that's a great marketing strategy. You could put something out there and be a fly on the wall and make all the adjustments and then release it. And everyone's like, no way. It's got all the stuff, you know. And then people are just like, take my money. So, you know, that'd be nice. Um, let's see here. Jason Lewis, uh, he says, Tone Wars, if EVH produced a $4,000 amp, wouldn't that deny Eddie's vision of affordability? Also, as a Black Star owner, two things why you may not like them. Voice for rock, two cheap stock speakers. Yeah, <laughs> could be. Yeah. Um, well, uh, the Black Stars, I play with the heads through my cab, so um, that was definitely some. And they are voice for rock. You know, I'm more of a metal guy. But... I'm not saying they have to, and I appreciate your, your point here. That's what this is about. So I love the back and forth. Um, thank you. Um, so I guess my thing is, I'm not saying they should make a $4,000 amp. But a $2,000 amp these days, I, I mean, I mean, hell, the, the, the Stealth is 14, what is it, fourteen ninety nine, And you can't keep them in stock. They're flying off the of shelves everywhere. So that's your benchmark right now. It's like, well, how well did the Stealth do? Well, it's doing really good. We can't keep them in stock. All right. Well, why do we have to sell one for eight ninety nine then, and cut all these corners? Well, because if they want the features, then we'll cut corners. No, just freaking, like no. Let's let's put this out. I'm sure if they put it out for seventeen ninety nine or whatever, it would sell like crazy anyway. You know, I really think that that price point would work. I'm not saying that this particular amp with the features and the tubes and the, all that would sell for $17.99. No, that would be a slap in the face to everyone. Um, but if they made a, 17, a legit $17.99 amp with all the power and the features and the MIDI and the, you know, all the power, the power tubes and the preamp tubes and all that stuff. And, you know, that would be awesome. And I'm sure they would buy it. I'm sure people would buy it. Um, so, I mean, again, there's there's amps flying off the shelves all over the place that they can't keep in stock, and they're they're a lot more than eight ninety nine. So, but I appreciate your your point. That's a very good point, um, and I I still think it's affordable. Um, let's see here. Uh, sorry if I'm missing your comments. You can tag me, and I'll make sure I see it. Um, uh, Daniel Hogland says, I love the EVH stuff. Playing my custom shop, Stage KM7 Mark III, Snowblind White guitar through a 50-watt 6L6 right now. Awesome, man. Yeah, they make great stuff. The thing is, is the EVH stuff, are, they're kind of like the benchmarks, right? I mean, if, if and when you come out with an amp, uh, you know, a metal amp especially, you, everybody's like, how's it compared to the EVH? Because it's a benchmark. It's a standard. You know, and people take them for granted because they're standards, but there's just because it's standard doesn't mean it's not good. Um, Aaron Lucas, uh, in your opinion, are manufacturers making more affordable amps to offset revenue loss d due to people not uh, just buying amp profiles? Um, that's a good question. Um, I, I don't think so. Um, that's a very good question and point. If I was an amp builder, um, I would be making amps that are more attractive to people um, look at the rev I mean look at the features that thing has you know and a lot of people are buying you know digital platforms because they want convenience 
that's really what they're paying for. They're paying for convenience. It's just like a, a 7-Eleven, you know. They're open 24 hours, and, um, you know, you can get milk and eggs and whatever you need there, and you don't have to wait till tomorrow morning. You're buying, you're paying for convenience. Um, so, so what would a, a big chain grocery store do? Well, we're open 24 hours now. Now we're just as convenient as 7-Eleven, and we have better prices and more inventory. That's what I'm saying. That's what amplifier companies should be doing. And like I said, with the Rev, you're paying for the convenience. You have DI outs on the Rev. You have the two notes torpedo uh, system in it, and you can hook up to um, direct into a PA uh, and not have to bring your cab on tour if you don't want to. So that's what you're getting with that. You're getting four amazing channels. You get the two notes. Um, you know a bunch of other features so you're you're, you're getting uh headphones i mean you're getting all this stuff um so you're you're getting convenience um so what the amp companies are doing to get their market share back and what they should be doing is creating an amplifier that you can't say no to it's like well yeah but i like this pedal board i can just put it on the floor well i can do that with my amp too I can just set it right on the floor next to me and plug it into direct in front of house and you know maybe got a couple pedals hooked up to it or whatever but i'm good to go i don't need to bring a cab anymore i mean that amp head will fit in the car actually that amp head will fit in my car easier than my whole helix you know aircraft carrier board in front of me right here so i mean <laughs> you know it's actually it's a little heavier but it's it's it takes up less room so i think they should be buying back their um market share by making stuff that sounds amazing um, that we uh, we get that convenience with. I mean, um, yeah, some of it's really expensive, but um, some pe a lot of people are willing to part with that money. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Eric's, uh, Eric Salinas, I like amps that sound better with an OD pedal up front, but don't need them. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I love, I slam every amp with an overdrive, um, and I just, I like an amp that's got a little bit too much low end in it, because when you do sculpt it with an overdrive pedal, now you don't have a thin sounding amp. You have all that room to sculpt and make your tone the way you want, because if you have a super tight amp and you hit it with an overdrive, it's like, ooh, got a little thin there, you know? I mean, the Badlander um, is a great amp, and it's pretty tight. And that's about, boy, if they would have made that any, here's the 10% thing. If they would have made that amp 10% tighter, I wouldn't have bought it because it would have been too thin with the overdrive pedal. So I just, you know, I think that um, the amp sounds great with an overdrive pedal. But if, like I said, if they would have, you know, made it too tight, it wouldn't have worked for me. Um, let's see, Aaron D in the red channel on the 100 watt Stealth is the absolute best as far as I'm concerned. Totally agree. Oh, yeah, dude, that channel is fire man just freaking fire um christy a little off topic but the rev mark three purple red channel versus driftwood i have the 100p mark three uh, i could do that let me screenshot that i'm super busy with work right now but i will get to it when i can <laughs> i'm surprised i'm even doing this live stream right now i should be in bed but i love hanging out with you guys um so dan c says what what would you say is the biggest difference between the Stealth and the white 6L6 50-watt 3 heads? Ooh, great question. The Stealth is juicier. It has more grease in it. It's just, it's got that really great feel. It's not as dry. I don't, I'm okay with sort of dry amps, but that, the, the white one, the, the 50, you know, the 5153, it's too dry for me. It's kind of brittle and crumbly. Um, sounds okay in a mix, you know, don't get me wrong, sounds good, but when you play it, it's just kind of dry and brittle compared to the Stealth, and the blue channel on that amp just, it just didn't have enough gain, or maybe it was like it just didn't have enough saturation for me, but the Stealth, perfect saturation, let me demonstrate.
I could play that all day. That amp is just ridiculous. I was on pins and needles when I bought the Stealth because I was like, man, if this is like that freaking white one, it's going right back. I just can't deal with a dry, brittle, not gainy or not saturated enough uh, blue channel. It's uh, I'm not going to buy an amp for one channel, but paying for three, but you're only like one. To me, that's a waste of money. And I was so relieved when I dialed that thing in and started playing. I was like, yep, good, good to go. I already knew the red channel would work for me. It was contingent on the blue channel. It just, the blue channel had to work. Listen to the clean channel on it. I mean, I got nothing bad to say about the clean channel. You know, I mean, it's all three channels on this amplifier work. It's worth every freaking penny. It's a no-brainer amp. So, which brings me back to, if you're going to release a new EVH, uh, whether it's iconic or not, that's what everyone's going to compare it to. So, EVH, if you're watching, this is what you have to match up to, in my opinion. I know you're making an iconic one, and I think that that's really cool, and I love the idea. I really do. But we can't help ourselves. We're going to ask, how does it compare to the Stealth? Because that is your benchmark right there. That's a benchmark for a lot of amps to compare to right now. And if this thing just eats its lunch and pops the bag, eh, it's going to be a difficult sell, even if it's uh, $8.99. Which brings me back to people don't mind parting with the money. Because anybody, let's just, okay, let's pretend for a second the Stealth beats the new Iconic. But the stealth is more. Guess what people are going to do? They're going to spend more money. They're going to spend more money on it, almost twice as much, about 70% more money, uh, to get the stealth. Why? Because it sounds better. You know? And it's got MIDI. So it's like, and more tubes, and no corners cut. So you know what I'm saying? So I would, I would highly, highly, highly recommend that they at least say, well, let's shoot it out with the stealth. Because everything compared to nothing is awesome. Because compared to nothing, everything's great. You know, um, you know. I mean, dumpster pizza is not as good as Little Caesars. <laughs> but when you compare Little Caesars to something like Alibi Pizza or some, you know, fancy pants pizza place, I mean, it's like, oh gosh, you know. So yeah, Little Caesars is amazing when you compare it to dumpster pizza. But you know, let's compare it to something good, which is the stealth, and really see what we got. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of my, my thought on that. Um, but, uh, let's see here. Ed Hinchy, what's going on, buddy? Good to see you. Keep dropping my pick here. Um, he says, I'm still in the rabbit hole with my Rev Generator 120 that my EVH Stealth 50 watt isn't getting any love, let alone this thing. Oh man. Yeah, the, the, the Stealth is amazing, dude. And so is the Rev. So I totally get it. Um, let's see here, uh, uh, let me catch up to you guys. I'm trying to stay really close to, uh, staying on, on point here. Um, okay, Frankie Boots, I watched your Mark 525 vids and I'm dying for one. I mainly play in my apartment. Is it doable for Metallica Megadeth Slayer tone, you think? Uh, what is your honest opinion when compared to the Engel? Um, so you're talking about the Mark 525. Uh, yeah, the uh, the Mark 525, I think, uh, weren't, weren't the Marks used on some uh, Metallica stuff back in the day, if I remember correctly? Yeah, the Mark 525 is a great amp. I mean, for a lunchbox amp, I mean, they're freaking amazing. And the build quality's there really good i just did a video about the um mark 525 compared to the new engel uh lunchbox and i thought they both fared well i think it just came down to what you preferred tone wise i mean i thought they sounded great though so, yeah i still love my mark 525 i think it's a freaking amazing amp i gotta build more shelves in here so i could put them all up here for you guys to see but yeah i think it would be a great amp for you i really do 
Okay, Luke Wilson, my theory, this was an intro project for James at EVH. Okay, good point, good point. Uh, next real gem will be the 5154 with all the goods. MIDI, two notes built in, all the tubes, etc. for 3K. You know what? You could have a you could have a point. You know the thing is though, is I as I appreciate your comment and um, you you might be right, but if I was James Brown and I was coming back to EVH and everybody knows who I am and what I've done, I was the original master of the original one. I'd be like, dude, I am not uh, gonna slink into the hot tub. I'm doing a cannonball. <laughs> I don't care if it pisses everybody off. I'm doing a cannonball into this hot tub, man, and I'm gonna freaking go in all the way, and I'm gonna come up with something that completely blows everybody away. That's just my personality. James Brown might not be, you know, that kind of guy, and I'm not saying he's right or wrong or whatever. I'm just saying that if it was me, I'd be like, I am coming in, and I'm gonna make the biggest splash that I can. And if I'm doing it in a hot tub, at least it's warm water, right? So, um, let's see here. Travis, what's going on, buddy? He says, I wonder how a two-channel 5150 with no true clean channel will do in the market. Cleans are a bigger part of modern metal. You're right. I love good cleans, man. I can't stand, like, the uh, the amplifiers out there. And I've, I've done a lot of shows. Oh, my God, we've we done a lot of shows. And you get on stage... You know, you do your show and then you, you know, you stay and support the other bands and you get a guy up there with like a two channel amp and the clean channel sounds, it's like that dirty clean that just sounds awful and it's brittle and the guy's like plucking his strings real hard and you're just like, dude, <laughs> you're clearing out the room with your clean channel. It's so bad. You know, I like a good, warm, lush, beautiful, clean channel. And um, now they did say that it's a clean channel with an overdrive knob on it. Um, I'll pull the features back up again for people. We keep getting more people in here, which is awesome. Uh, I got 58, 59 people in here now, which is great. Thank you. Um, so again, you got, uh, where did I see that? Um, yeah, the green channel has an OD knob. So maybe it, you can add a little dirt if you want so you can get that dirty breakup. Um, or you can have lush cleans. I don't know. This is all speculation at this point again, but here are the features again. 80 watts at 899, two channels, green and red. Green channel has an OD knob. Red channel has burn button. The reason why I'm reading these is a lot of people are watching, uh, they're listening, not watching. Volume boost, um, is a, so the burn button is either a volume boost for solos or a front end boost, we don't know. Noise gate, 4, 8, 16 ohm, two, JJ ECC 83S preamp tubes, and we've confirmed that it's four, not two. 6L6 power amp tubes, XLR DI out, foot switch, yada yada bing bang, and a partridge in a pear tree. So, yeah, so that's basically what you get there. Um, and you know, there's probably a few other little unmentionables that I didn't mention, but uh, Gearwalker, what's happening, buddy? Um, yeah, Travis says, it seems like a two-channel amp is already a budget-level amp. Well, yeah, I mean, it, you might be right. I mean, the thing is, is there are a lot of two-channel amps out there that, I mean, this one was over two grand. This is a two-channel amp. You know, God, does this thing sound good. You know, so there are some two-channel amps out there. Friedman's are like $3,600, 30, you know, 3900 you know. I mean, there's definitely some amps out there. And that's the thing. you got to look at the market, like... People are buying these. I mean, that's a four thousand dollar amp. So let's, you know, the diesel forty two hundred dollars. That's the Angle Savage is three three thousand. So people buy these. I mean, I'm not a freak. You know, I'm not some weird uh, eccentric billionaire that's buying these things. I'm just a regular dude. I'm a blue collar dude. I'm a hard working guy, just like all you guys. You know, so uh, you know, so people buy these. If they didn't, they wouldn't be on the market. They wouldn't be at all these different stores. So. It's like look at the market. Like if, if someone's gonna buy a diesel for forty two hundred, um, I'm sure an EVH reissue like iconic series amp based on the first one made by the original beast builder uh, James Brown would sell for two grand all day long, all freaking day, all day long. You know there are people that can't afford it that will sell whatever they gotta sell to buy that thing when it comes out. I'm just telling you. And if EVH is watching right now and they're they're doing the fly on the wall thing, I'm telling you guys, 
I'm not saying charge more. I'm just saying build an amp that will sell for, you know, $1,799, $2,000 and is worth that because of the features and the build quality and all the tubes and the power and the this and the that. Uh, it'll sell. It'll definitely sell, you know. I'm not saying charge more for the amp that we're seeing in the picture here because that, no. <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay more for that. And I'm not saying it's not good. I'm just saying I wouldn't pay more for it. I'm just trying to be clear here. Um, let's see here. See, all right, here. Roscoe P. Coltrane. I'll take a slow 100. See, that's a 40, What? that's over four grand. That's what I'm saying. There's plenty of people that'll buy this stuff. Um, so... Uh, Dan C, excellent point about overdrive pedals sucking out the bottom end. Yeah, I mean, you, you definitely want an amp that has enough of that low-end girth so that when you do hit it with a, uh, an overdrive pedal, it's fine. That's why I don't mind p playing. Like, if I plug into a flubby, tubby, gooey amp and it doesn't have an overdrive in front, of, I'm not like, oh, I can't play this. I'm just like, overdrive pedal covers a multitude of sins. You know, it just, it's a desert island pedal. If I only could bring one pedal on tour with me, it would be an overdrive. I will give up every other pedal on the market for an overdrive pedal without even a thought. Because you can give me delay, chorus, flangers, reverbs. You can give me the, you know, the best uh, delay pedals on the market. And I will turn them down. What's the $6,000 delay pedal? Keep it. I'll take my $100 overdrive. Thanks. Because I know I can play better. And I feel better about what I'm playing, and the amp will respond the way I want it to with a good overdrive pedal. Again, I don't care how gooey it is. Um, let's see here. Yeah, doesn't this amp sound good? So let me, let me play a couple. Uh, I am super rusty, guys, because all I do is work right now. I literally play guitar twice a week if I'm lucky right now. Let me just do a couple mixes for you. So I have it set up via MIDI. Um, so I'll be switching channels with my Helix. So some of the stuff you'll hear a red channel, some blue. So rhythms, I'll be red. Um, and uh, any kind of leads or whatever. I'm not going to do a lot of leads tonight, but any kind of stuff like that, you'll be, I'll be on the red channel. So let, let's just do a couple mixes here. <laughs> Thank you. 
It's just a no-brainer amp. It, it really is. I mean, for the money, for everything, it's just freaking stupid. It's awesome, you know. So, all right, let me see if there's any other questions. I'll be on for a few more minutes here. Um, JB50, well, I just opened YouTube and saw you live. <laughs> yeah, I had to, man. I got all that news today, so I had to check it out. Um, uh, let's see here. Travis, let's see here. Just trying to catch up to you guys. Dan Hoagland, I uh, love your Majesty guitar. Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate that. Yeah, I, that's all I play is the, the Majesties for the most part. I have a, a JP-15 upstairs, but um, I play these Majesties. They practically play themselves. They're freaking amazing. Um, let's see here. Looks like Roscoe made a good... Oh, he's, he's saying, I wonder if the Iconic is a Plexi. Um, that would be interesting, wouldn't it? You know, that was something I said earlier. I, they're, they're doing a series, so maybe one of them's the Plexi. So, yeah, it, it very well could be. Who knows? But the thing is, though, is James Brown was known for the 5150, and, you know, it's like, ah, man, it's like so much speculation. Who knows what it could be, you know? Who knows? But that is a good guess. It really is. Uh Steve Uncheck, Ingle Fireball 25 on order. Awesome, dude. I'm sure you're going to like it. It's a good amp. Um, Danny Hoagland says, uh, EVH amps are the best amp for the money on the market. The amps punch outside its, its class. Yeah, you're right, man. The, those amps are just, they really are the, the most no-brainery kind of amp there there is. You know, they're just great. Um Yeah, Travis says, I wish I had more thump, but that's a 50 for you. Yeah, I mean, that's why I had the resonance cranked on it uh, at like 3 o'clock. And I got the bass. The bass is all the way up on the on the blue channel. And I actually did a video where I had them both here, the 50 and the 100. And I tried to get the 50 to sound close to it. And I got it close, but there's just something, especially in the room. There's that fire and that fullness that the... Um, you know the 100 watts have that you just can't get on a 50 but i got this thing to sound damn close and i haven't touched the setting since because i just feel like well that's as close as it's going to get and uh that those settings are holy ground man um steve venchek says i think it'll sell because of the price point yeah i mean 899 but that's the problem though again i think you're right it'll probably sell but the problem with stuff that sells quickly because of a price point, and I'm not saying this is going to happen with this one, because maybe it's it's going to be amazing. I don't know. But I'm just saying, let's say it is a price point based amp mostly, um, and everything else is kind of secondary. What happens is word gets out. I'm in all these amp groups on Facebook and then, you know, YouTube channels, all that. After a while, the word starts getting out like, yeah, it's eight ninety nine, but it's kind of womp, womp, you know. So I'm not saying it will, but... Sometimes that happens with price point based stuff, and then pretty soon people are like, "Nah, I'll just get the stealth," and which makes my point again: if the stealth is better, people will spend more money and get the stealth. It's just the way it is. When it comes to tone, you know how us guitar players are: we spare no expense. I mean, we'll just we'll do everything we can to get the thing that works for us. Um, Travis, but the Diesel, Ingel, Invective, Rev all have three channels and versatility tone wars. You're right. Yep, the three channels and versatility is definitely something that a lot of people want. I, I'm i pretty much like, as far as like a one, if I was to only have one amp, I would have to have three channels. I need a great clean that's just absolutely glorious. I need a, um, a good crunch rhythm channel that has enough gain for me and enough headroom in that gain so I, I can feel comfortable with it and confident with it. And I need a ridiculous lead channel that's saturated, full of uh, great aggression and sustain and uh just sounds it just sings like a bird you know um i need that and to have like some of these these amps that have like the the hybrid channel like oh it's clean or dirty it's like yeah but when i'm live i can't do that i can't go over and oh i'm clean oh i'm you know i, I can't i need something that's dedicated and conversely on top of that 
Having a channel that does both clean and dirty, a lot of times there's a compromise, and it's not a dedicated clean channel, so it's going to be thin um, because of the way the circuit is uh, when you switch it over to uh, dirty. So there's always that compromise that happens, and it just, you know, that's what happened with the Badlander. I love the Badlander, but the clean channel on it, or the clean, uh, you know, setting on that on the on channel uh, is a little thin because it, it serves three channels it's clean crush or, or clean crunch or crush so there's something had to give way there and it was the clean channel that had to make the sacrifice so that the other two channels would sound amazing and they do um yeah jb's asking about the new iconic 5150 yeah i don't know if i'm gonna buy it or not yeah we'll have to see <laughs> um uh yeah, I mean, I think it'll sell, and I think people are going to like it. I really do think it's going to be a good uh, a good amplifier, but I'm just, you know, it's just one of those things. We don't know. We just don't know. Um, let's see here. Catch up to you guys. Uh, what's juicier, Paul says, uh, Stealth or EL34? So I've compared them. I actually have a video out that I compared them. Um, the blue channel on the EL50 watt, anyways, is a flubby, tubby, useless mess unless you do that C45. Was it C? There's a circuit. You snip a circuit in there and it tightens the channel rate right up. So if you're going to get that, snip that circuit and you'll have an awesome blue channel. Um, the red channel on it is stupid good. It's ridiculous. Um, I think that the um, between the two uh, the EVH uh, stealth is a tad bit drier than the EL34 the EL34 has got a little more juice in it um, I like them both though so um, but yeah between the two the EL's got a little a little more saturation in it um, but I again I think they're both amazing really really good amps um, let's see how was the blue channel on the 100? I felt like the blue channel on the 50 was a little tighter. Uh, oh, are you talking about the uh, the EL34? I heard the EL34 blue channel is better than the 50. Uh, the, the EL34 blue channel on the 100 watts better than the 50. They don't have that weird gooiness in it, if that's what you're asking. Um, stealth goodness, Sean Casey says. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's awesome. Um... Okay, so you're talking about the stealth uh, uh, 100 watt. Yeah, I will have to check the check that again because I felt like the stealth 50 watt blue was a little tighter than the 100, but maybe it was just something I dialed in different. Um, there's definitely more low end in it, so maybe that was it. You know, who knows? Um, oh, okay, got you, Travis. Thank you. Um, let me scroll up, catch up to you guys. Um, Uh, Daniel says, I also get good sound dimming the mids, uh, and setting the treble and bass at noon on the red channel resonance at three o'clock and gain at 11 o'clock. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. I actually prefer to use a single gain channel for rhythm and leads. Yeah, JB, you can do that for sure. I do that too sometimes on amps that, that uh, have that. But there's, in my opinion, there's a bit of a compromise because I need enough saturation for leads, but I need it dry enough and tight enough for rhythms. So I, there's like, there's always, because, you know, I need my leads to be saturated. I always have a little too much, you know, uh, in there. Uh, so that when I do have leads, I can, I can have that uh, sustain and saturation that I like. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's always a little bit of a compromise and I'll always compromise on the side of, uh, the rhythms as opposed to the leads, you know, it's just, I just want it to be tighter, but you can't sometimes, you know, um, let's see here. Jason says, uh, Wolfgang has been involved in some capacity since before Eddie passed. So if Wolfgang approves... Uh, so would have Eddie. Uh, plus, he's the biggest reason JB 
came to EVH. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome, dude. Wolf Game's new album is like stupid good too. Oh my god, that kid, man. I'm calling him a kid, he's thirty. But you know that I think he did such a great job on that album. The production, the songwriting. He's such a great songwriter, and he plays all the instruments. I mean, boy, you t you talk about talent, heart and soul. And you know what I really like about that album is the fact that he wasn't like a clone of his dad's. You know, he's not like, oh, I got to carry it on and do all the tapping. And no, that's been done. Let it be what it is. And Wolfgang completely just took his own path, blazed his own trail. You can tell that the spirit of Eddie's in him. Obviously, he's his son. And he's carrying it on, but he's doing it with his own way, his own voice, his own style. And I have so much respect for that, and I'm so grateful that he's um, just doing his own thing, and he's doing it so well. And that's why I say all the time, be the best you you can be. Don't try to be like somebody else. It's already been done. Why would, why would we want the diet version of the real thing? Just be you. You know, and he's doing such a great job of that. I got to really tip my hat to him. What a great job on that album. Um, let's see, Luke Wilson, Tone Wars, when are you getting a Omega Granifier, Detroit Company? Yeah, uh, as soon as I get paid from all these jobs that I'm doing right now, it's definitely on my list. But yeah, but it, it takes forever to get an amp from them guys. So I bet you if I ordered it today, I wouldn't have it till freaking Christmas. And, I, and that's not a joke. I really think I would wait, you know, Probably 20, 30 weeks for that thing. Hopefully I'm wrong, but, man, I got friends that ordered from them, and they're like, dude, don't hold your breath. You'll get it, but it's going to take a while, so we'll see. Um, let's see. Uh, Wolfgang rocks. <laughs> Roscoe says, yeah, he does, man. What a great kid, man. He's doing such a great job. Uh, JB says, I should check out Wolfbank, Wolfgang's album. No, seriously, you really should. It is so good. He's got some videos out, too, and he just did such a great job on the, on that uh, album. I, I, You know, it's funny, because when I first listened, I'm like, oh, boy, here we go. Uh, it's going to be, you know, Van Halen or Eddie Van Halen Part 2. It's going to be all the tapping. and uh, Nothing wrong with that, but it's like, but he was, like, complete, like, not opposite, but just a completely different direction. And you can tell that he's got his dad's talent, but he's got his own style. And I freaking love that so much. I'm so glad. I just breathed a sigh of relief when I heard the first few notes. I'm like, okay, this is, all right, this is him. This is Wolfgang all the way. It's his own thing, and I freaking love it. I'm so glad he did that, you know. Dan C., what do you do for a living? Uh, I own a pressure washing business. You know, I've been in business 22 years and uh, been doing it a long time. And I'm doing a lot of apartment buildings right now, and I'm grateful for the work. Um, but it's like it's keeping me hopping, man. I got no time. Like today it was like 90 with a heat index of 100, and I was working in that all day. I got home at 7 tonight and 7.30, you know, or whatever, and I'm just done. You know, um, and tomorrow I got to go back out. I'm working uh, most of the time seven days a week right now, just to get caught up. And I'm booked seven days a week until uh, the end of August or s maybe even September at this point because I'm so busy. You know, uh, so yeah, it's been it's been crazy. I do get a day off every once in a while because of weather, but it's still it's like insanity right now. Um, so JB says, for my next metal amp, should I go for an Ingle Savage or the JP? to see i think the jp i think they're both good amps you know but if i had to choose between the two i like the savage because it just has more of it's got it's more aggressive and there's more saturation there the jp is a little drier doesn't mean I, don't, I i love the jp i think it's so good you know but um if i had to you know if i had to flip a coin i would i would want it to land on the on the savage and that's a that's a close race there you know um it's just that's just my opinion my taste you know just the way it is um vox says you still rocking the eight gpm oh yeah man eight gallons per minute baby uh, that's that's how i work man i want eight gallons per minute is what i'm shooting yep i love uh, more gpms man thanks for being here aaron appreciate you Thank you so much. Great video. He says, I'll watch it. Thank you, dude. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Um, 
get that money yeah man oh trust me i'm getting it <laughs> it's it's a big summer man and now i'm i'm definitely gonna do some upgrades around here i have a um uh some more amps on the way and uh i'm just trying to pour some money into the channel and into my savings account because i gotta stay you know stay uh stable there too but uh yeah i'm definitely definitely working hard man um let me catch up to you guys okay i'll be on for about five more minutes uh this went longer than I thought, but I, I'm not complaining. I love this because I love hanging out with you guys. So thank you so much for your questions and your comments. Um, uh, Warm Core says, Tone Wars, the Mammoth record is really good. I was skeptical until I heard a couple of songs and saw him uh, live on Kimmel. Uh, dude makes some really good note choices with his transitions. You're right, dude. Seriously, like... If there's a no-brainer amp, it's the EVH Stealth. If there's a no-brainer album to check out, it's Wolfgang's album. Seriously, it is so enjoyable. And he wrote some songs about. He wrote a song about his dad, and it's just, oh, it's just so good. You know, just he's such a good writer. And if I had to choose between being a, a great writer and a great player, I would choose being a great writer eight days a week, and you know, uh, uh, over being a great player because I'm telling you people love good songs at the end of the day you know after watching somebody noodle at um, eight billion notes per second for three minutes everyone's like all right that's great you can play fast but i don't remember anything you did it's just you know i want to hear something melodic and beautiful and something that catches me and i can't get it out of my head that's the kind of stuff that um people really want you know something that you would get addicted to and uh, Wolf totally does that big time. Um, let's see. Uh, Luke Wilson, Tone Wars, have you sold any amps lately? Roadster? Yeah, I sold my Roadster to my friend uh, Steve Shaheen. Um, he wanted it really bad, and I, I liked the Badlander better, and I was like, you know what? The Badlander's like the, the modern version of that amp, so I, I went ahead and, and got the Badlander, and I, I'm happy with my decision i really am um let's see here jb says uh maybe the ingle savage would give more variety than with a bad light yeah yeah dude i yeah that's right uh, i'm glad you brought that up because since you have a bad lander get the savage it, it's going to be a complete like different thing but it's just as good it's just it's just <laughs> yeah because you don't want like something too close to what you had because you're almost like why did you buy you know it's just not different enough you know i think you would love the the savage make sure you turn the volume uh, channel volumes all the way up on the savage that's the trick to make that amp sound good um oh thanks dan he says you have the best live dude great job thank you so much dude i really appreciate that very much I really do. Honestly, it's because of you guys, too, because you guys have great comments and great questions, and I love interacting with you. That's what makes this stream good. You guys are all just as much of a part of it as I am because you guys steer it the way you want it to go, and I'm happy to take whatever route you guys want. I love doing it. Um, uh, let's see here. Daniel says, I, like, I love running a dead horse OD into the blue channel on the EVH. I haven't tried that one. I haven't heard of that one. That sounds interesting. I love overdrive pedals. They are awesome. Um, yeah, Vax Pathfinder, 8 G GPM is the pressure washers, what 100 watts is to amps. You're right, dude. <laughs> I'm all about that 8, man. Uh, JB says, I think EVH was the best combination of great player and songwriter. Yeah, he really was. Great technique and awesome songs. I like, I like uh, Eddie's rhythms uh more than i like his souls his souls are great don't get me wrong but his rhythms are stupid man that guy was such a great rhythm player um yeah uh, evh brought rock back into popularity back said yeah because before that it was all disco thank god for eddie because we'd all be you know wearing bell bottoms and <laughs> doing disco man screw that um uh, Warm Chorus says, Tone Wars, that song, The Distance, res resonated very well considering I lost my dad earlier uh, this year. Yeah, dude. Yeah. God bless you and God bless your dad, dude. Yeah, that's such a great song. A great, great song. Pro Tone Pedals. All right, I'll have to look that up, Dan. Thank you so much for that. Um, okay, let me... Uh, 
Sean Casey says, good night. Good night, buddy. See you Sunday. All right. Thanks for being here. So appreciate you guys being here. Let me do a couple riffs on the amp, uh, and then uh, we'll, we'll close out. just stupid freaking amazing uh parent davis tell more so the ingle savage mark ii is your favorite what's number two what's number three i'm guessing the stealth is two and the purple nightmare is three uh i say my top three definitely the savage purple nightmare because it's just ridiculous um i think the rev man the rev is probably three and then the the the, the stealth probably it's, it's hard to say it depends on my taste um, but the stealth, I mean, the thing is though, is I will say this every time I plug into the stealth, it blows me away. It's super good. I don't have to do it. It's just one of those amps that you almost don't appreciate because you're not always tweaking it. You set it up, you set and forget it. And every time you plug into it, it's stupid good. So, um, maybe that's what it is with me, but, uh, you know, the stealth could rotate through, you know, the, top three slots at any given moment with me because it's one of those amps i can come down to and plug into and again i'm, I'm you know I'm, I'm controlling it midi with my helix right now and i appreciate that so much i can do all i can do anything i need to do with that amp so it's definitely always a wild card as far as the top three amps go it could replace any of my top three amps at any given moment depending on what i need at the time and i'm never dissatisfied with it Every time I play through it, it just works. It's just a great freaking amp. So, uh, let's see here. Um, I love your show and tone, Daniel says. Thanks for the inspiration. You're welcome, dude. Thanks for being here. Well, guys, um, I, I can't even tell you how uh, grateful I am for you guys being here tonight. I really appreciate it. This was a lot of fun for me. I didn't even know what to expect tonight um, because I didn't even announce this. I just went live. So... Thank you so much for being here. I hope you found this informative, and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope people that are watching in the future uh, enjoy it as well. Um, I hope I stuck to the points enough to where you got what you needed out of the video, and I hope you enjoyed the songs. I, I know as basic as they are, I literally don't practice right now. I forgot half of my songs. i got to get back into shape and playing those again. Um, but... And that will happen, trust me, once I get caught up with work. But I hope you enjoyed at least the mixes so that you can hear the amp in the mix. So at least we got that out of the way. So, um, well, anyways, God bless you guys. Thank you so much for being here. I very much appreciate um, every one of you. Uh, you know, we know, I know that there's a lot of channels you could be watching, and I'm so honored that you actually chose to spend your evening with me. Seriously, it means a lot. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please do. And to all my subscribers, thank you so much. I uh, wouldn't have a show without you. <laughs> thank you, guys. Every day is a gift, and thank you so much for spending part of yours with me. I very much appreciate it. We will see you all soon, uh, Sunday night at 7. Carrie and I will uh, join you. Carrie returns. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> all right, God bless you.